by default, Tangle Deep will tear you down. This challenging RPG's intended playstyle involves permadeath, where you create a character, explore a randomly generated dungeon in turn-based mystery dungeon style, and then painfully start over whenever death comes. If you're new to the roguelike style or just brazen, you're going to die a lot. I sure as hell did. But what kept me coming back to Tangle Deep was the fact that when you die, Tangle Deep offers legitimately helpful tips to help smooth out your experience, and that's in addition to the layers of difficulty customization. With the onslaught of similar styled games out there, Tangle Deep might not stick out with its turn-based gameplay and exploration, but it nobly sets itself apart thanks to its variable challenge and mostly clear explanations and hints. In terms of challenge, Tangle Deep doesn't mess around. Carefully plotting your movements and attacks is paramount, as every action you make constitutes a turn that lets every enemy on the map also make a move. Keeping an eye on your health and stamina meters is key, as even in early areas, enemies can gang up on you and make escape difficult. Careless play leads to an abrupt end. Even as I trotted out my umpteenth character into the wilds of the dungeons, I kept learning as well as experimenting. Numerous classes offer up varied playstyles. There's the Brigand class, where you can focus on melee attacks while bouncing around the map using special abilities that obscure your position and confuse enemies. The Floromancer is more ranged as you lay out traps and summon helpful friends to do battle for you. One that struck my curiosity was the Edge Thane, a sword-focused class that uses songs to buff and string together attacks and abilities. More involved and challenging classes involve a focus on long-distance bow and arrow play, magic spells, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. On top of that, a wealth of customization lets you craft your preferred character and playstyle. Right off the bat, you have three difficulty modes. Heroic, Adventure, and Hardcore. Heroic is the intended playstyle, featuring permadeath, but also some surviving persistence from run to run. Adventure lets you play the same character, even after death, while Hardcore destroys your save file after your character dies. Past that, you have modifiers that vary from gentle aids like regenerating health and stamina outside of combat, to maniac challenges such as more enemies and less experience points. If there's an issue with all these variations and tweaks, it's that they are positively baffling at the outset. Across all of the classes and options and so forth and such on, you make these initial decisions without actually setting foot anywhere in the game, and the descriptions, while trying to help real hard, can confuse at first glance just as much as they assist. Really, it was only through repeated plays kind of beating my head against the wall that I learned anything about how to play this game and what options I wanted to make use of when I played it. Getting over that hump is worth it, because there is so much to do here. Aside from the primary quest of working your way through floors of randomly generated dungeons, multiple mechanics help flesh out the world. The Monster Corral lets you capture monsters and raise and breed them to help you out in battle. Item Dream Dungeons are quicker one-off challenges, sometimes with bonkers twists, where you can upgrade your gear. In addition to all of this, daily and weekly challenges all feed into an online leaderboard system if that's your bag. It's personally not mine. When dealing with the intricacies of the menus and combat, it's evident that this game originated with a mouse and keyboard. While the conversion from PC to Switch is ultimately fine, the interface is extremely dense and sometimes feels like a square peg of PC controls being shoved into a round hole of Joy-Con. The fact it works on Switch is impressive, but after seeing some smoother PC to console transitions lately, this stood out like a sore thumb for Tangle Deep. While the fantastic art style and spectacular soundtrack, featuring tracks from Grant Kirkhope and Hiroki Kakuda, might call to mind masterful 2D square RPGs from the 90s, like, you know, Secret of Mana, which Hiroki Kakuda composed the music for. Uh, but anyway, the gameplay in Tangle Deep is thoroughly a take on the mystery dungeon style of roguelike. You work your way through random dungeons, complete with all the nonsense you'd expect from mystery dungeon games. Sometimes the stairs to the next floor are just right near the entrance, and you're not really encouraged to explore, and then you're underleveled, and it's a whole bad thing. Sometimes the random number generator will just screw you. The very design of this game is brutal and sometimes unfair, and that just kind of comes with the territory of being a mystery dungeon-style roguelike. But when Tangle Deep strikes you down, it offers advice, recommending healing items, encouraging pet training, and more. That helping hand, combined with the gameplay modifiers, lets you customize the difficulty in a way I haven't seen in many similar games. These kinds of assist modes are a running thread through games I appreciate lately, and Tangle Deep's accessibility is absolutely wonderful. 
Some elements of these mystery dungeon type games will just always be inscrutable, but Tangle Deep does the best job I've seen at making it playable for everyone. The Switch version might not be ideal thanks to the clumsy interface, but it's worth figuring it out because underneath the difficulty and few crusty layers lies a beautiful game with a ton of enjoyable RPG variety. This has been a review at NintendoWorldReport.com. If you like and want to see more stuff like this, be sure to check out this here YouTube channel, Nintendo World Report TV. You can also read stuff at NintendoWorldReport.com. That's a website, kids. And uh, you can also support us over on Patreon at Patreon.com slash NWR. We also have a Discord. Talk to us there. We'll talk to you about games. We, we're even doing some, some game clubs with our, with our patrons that we use Discord to talk about. So that's fun. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we can play Tangle Deep or something. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.